Today is the 29th of March, uh, 2012. We are in Schenectady, New York at the Kingsway Village Apartments. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. Ma'am, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? I am Dorothy Johnson Syme, and I was born in Springfield, Vermont. And I'm 85 years old. <laughs> <laughs> what year were you uh, born in Vermont? What? What? Uh, what year were you born? What's, what's your birth date? Oh, September 21st, 1926. And did you attend school there? Yes. Did you graduate from high school? Yes, and then I went to Russell Sage College in oh. Troy. Oh, you did. All right. And... Uh, do you recall where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? I was home with my family, sitting around our one radio, listening mm -hmm. to President Roosevelt. And did your life change at that point? I mean, with rationing or, or anything like that, <laughs> shortages? Yes, it changed a lot. We were rationed with coffee, sugar, meat, and a few other things. Right. Anyway. Okay. And um, now what year did you graduate from high school? In 1948. Okay. So, so the war was over. So you were quite you were quite young when uh, World War II was going on, yeah. and uh, did you participate in any kind of uh, home front activities like scrap yeah. drives? Or? <clears throat> they asked for volunteers to be air spotters, mm -hmm. and the reason Springfield, Vermont, was important was because. There were three machine tool shops in Springfield. My father worked at Jones and Lamson Machine Tool Company. Then there was the Gear Shaper. Then there was the Bryant Chucking and Grinder. Mm -hmm. And all of these businesses were needed to build airplanes. Mm -hmm. So apparently the government thought that some German people might bomb Springfield. Mm -hmm. So they <clears throat> asked for air spotters. We had to turn off the lights at night until we pulled these dark shades down. Oh, the blackout shades? Yeah. And there was a volunteer walking the streets to make sure that no nobody left their lights on. And if they did, they'd come to your door and say, please, Pull your shades down. Now, did you ever have that happen to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was up in my bedroom and I forgot. Uh-huh. But the air spotter program started with courses. Mm -hmm. You had to come to class. Now, how old were you when you attended these courses? I was a teenager. Okay. And... We, we went to this community place and had classes, and they showed pictures of airplanes mm -hmm. and showed us how the tailpieces differed in the fuselage and the engines. And we had a test. <laughs> and then they asked us to volunteer our time to mm -hmm. watch for airplane. Now, how long did these courses last for? Oh, I don't remember. And were, b besides photos of, of the planes, were there any models that they had too? No, but they flashed the plane on a screen. All right. The silhouette. And the peculiar thing was they didn't give us any binoculars, mm -hmm. and the planes were way up high. So you couldn't see a lot of 
silhouette. Uh-huh. But what happened was my sister and I and my friend volunteered on Saturday, because that's the only free day we had. Mm -hmm. I got up at 5.30, and a fellow named Wimpy, <laughs> who was the local car cab driver, uh -huh. was also a volunteer for this program. And he would pick me up at 5.30 and drive about five miles out in the country onto a field where there was a an old bus. They had taken the seats out of the bus and put in a wood stove. Mm -hmm. We had a couple seats left. And a phone. That's all we had. So you weren't in any kind of tower or anything? No. We were out in the middle of a field. Hmm. Summer, winter, spring, or fall. And the wood stove we used in the winter but it was very hard to regulate. So we were either freezing or boiling. <laughs> and I remember I broke out with German measles while I was on duty one day. Oh my goodness. But a, <clears throat> German measles doesn't make you sick, it just makes you itch mm -hmm. and you run a fever. So when the plane went over, we were supposed to run outside decide what direction it was going to, where it was coming from, and any identifying things that we could get. And then we had to come in and call Albany. Oh. And we were thrilled one day when an airplane went over with pontoons. <laughs> because we could identify something about the plane. Uh-huh. But it just, it wasn't difficult. Mm -hmm. And when no planes went over, we would do our homework or read a book, mm -hmm. and it was for two hours. And then Wimpy would appear with a, with my sister who was volunteering, and take us back home. Mm -hmm. And this went on. I don't remember mm -hmm. when. We, was it like uh, a year or two years or, or longer or shorter? It, it probably was a couple of years. All right. And, we, and you did this every Saturday? Yeah. At 5.30 in the morning. Huh. Even if you had a prom the night before, you had to get up and be ready at 5.30. Now, did you use a, a compass at all to, to, no. to determine the direction? we didn't have a compass. We didn't have binoculars. It was very <laughs> well, low key. Uh huh. Now, did you have uh, an armband or anything that signified that you were an air aircraft spotter? Well, one thing happened. I was just, I just felt so important. Mm -hmm. They fingerprinted us for the FBI files. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Teenagers. Uh huh. But that impressed me. Did you have any kind of ID card or anything? We had a little ID card, and I have looked everywhere for it, but in moving four times, I have misplaced it. Mm -hmm. hmm. But we... But also, I was asking, did you, did you, did you have like an armband? I, I've, no. I've seen... Not that I remember. Okay. I would have saved that. <laughs> <laughs> and... We had to be very careful. There was the rationing affected everybody because mm -hmm. you couldn't have, you couldn't just go down and buy a pair of shoes. Oh yeah. You had to have a stamp. Mm -hmm. And my mother, I was one of five kids. My mother would line us up and see who needed the shoes the oh. most. <laughs> And that's the way, and you only had one pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Nobody had a lot. Was your father alive? Yes. My I, father was an engineer at Jones and Lamson Machine Tool Company. Mm -hmm. And during the war, he had to work a lot of overtime, which is what put us through college. 
Oh, I see. Okay. So all seven of us went to college. Mm -hmm. But we were short of, we, meat was hard to come by. Mm -hmm. So my mother paid a farmer to raise a little piglet until they got to be big enough to be slaughtered and that provided food for us for a while. And then I remember one day she was trying to be very, very careful. <laughs> and she decided to make a meatloaf out of peanuts. Well, it was awful. <laughs> and every one of us groaned and moaned and said, Mom, don't do this again. Just give us the peanuts. <laughs> now, did it have meat in it and peanuts? No, or? no meat. No meat. Just breadcrumbs and seasoning and peanuts. Mm -hmm. It was awful. <laughs> now, did uh, you have one of those, what they call the victory garden? Did you grow your oh, own yes. vegetables? My father planted a big garden. And he was very fussy, so none of us got in the garden. My mother grew flowers and my father grew all kinds of vegetables. Mm -hmm. Did your mother do canning? Yes, she canned. And we had a stove, a gas stove, mm -hmm. that had no regulation on it. There was no temperature control. Okay. So you had to look at the flame and decide what was appropriate if you wanted to put a cake in. Oh. <laughs> Very. But it was interesting, and I remember, this was probably before then, we had an ice box, and the guy that had the ice would deliver once a week, go in and ask how much he wanted, mm -hmm. and then went out and chipped it with his whatever, and bring it in, and put it in the ice chest. Mm -hmm. And then, there was a hole in the bottom of the ice chest to drain the water. Yeah. And my, f we would all forget to empty the pan underneath. So my father finally put a, a pipe from there to the outside. So nobody had to re <laughs> <laughs> remember to empty it. The eggs, <clears throat> you could get eggs. So my mother had a big crock and she put what she called water glass in it, which was some kind of a preservative, but I don't know what it was. Hmm. And then you could store three or four or five dozen eggs in it hmm. for whatever time. There was no limit. Hmm. Now, did she like hard boil them or anything, or just the regular? Any any way you wanted them, they were okay. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew what was in that water glass, hmm. but I'm not sure she even she did. My mother graduated from the University of Vermont in home ec, so she was very tuned into oh, I see nutrition. Sure, but. Uh, we didn't have, we didn't have coffee, but I never drank coffee until I went on night duty in nurses training. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't matter to me, but we had, the coffee was terrible. It was mixed up with something that was bitter. Oh, like chicory or something? Yeah. yeah. Now, did you have any family members that were in the in the military during that time? Any relatives or? No, my father was needed for the war effort. Mm -hmm. My brother went into the service when he got in college. He was in the navy. Was this after the war? Or... No, it was during the war. Oh, okay. And he was excused from service until he graduated and then he went on a ship to Guam. Oh, okay.
But by then the war had ended, so they got to Guam and got bored. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned uh, uh, your training with the aircraft was American air aircraft and German aircraft. What about Japanese aircraft? Were there Japanese planes you had to uh, learn to identify too? Well, <clears throat> the Zeros, we understood later on that a Zero had flown clear across the country and had not been identified. <laughs> but I don't know whether that was fact or fiction. Well, there would have been no way it could fly across the United States with stop, without stopping someplace for refueling. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, <clears throat> we knew that there were German submarines along the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know where they thought airplanes would come from mm -hmm. that would be detrimental to the United States, but. Yeah. They now, did you have like a local airport at all? A very, very tiny one, but Colonel Lundberg landed there once with his airplane, and I have a picture somewhere of him. Oh. At this airport. Uh huh. Huh. <clears throat> now, do you recall the death of President Roosevelt? Oh yes. What was that like for you? Was that a was that a shock? Had you known knew that he had been sick? Well, or? <clears throat> we knew he wasn't in good health because mm -hmm. he used to go down to Palm Springs, and I was in college when he died, so I had other worries <laughs> besides President Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. So. Now you were you were uh, training to be a nurse yes. by that time. And the interesting thing was the girls in the class ahead of me joined the Army Nurse Corps mm -hmm. while they were in training and got paid a monthly stipend of $75, which was a lot of money sure. in those days. So being one of five, I was going to apply and they stopped the program the year before I would have gotten oh. in, oh. <laughs> which was tough. Now, do you remember uh, what it was like when you heard about the war ending in Germany? Was there much celebration? Of course, we were still at war with Japan then, but... There was. <clears throat> and I was off duty, and a bunch of us nurses that were off duty went down to the city of Albany and the place was like, it was just bowling over with excitement. Mm -hmm. And people, there were, the Port of Albany was a place for fairly large ships to come in with mm -hmm. sailors. And the sailors were all walking up and down the street. It was a, a joyous occasion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Was, now, how did you get down to Albany from uh, Vermont? Did you go by car or bus or? We were rationed with, gasoline was rationed a lot. Yeah. But my father brought us over in the car and that was the only trip he made until I got my nurse's cap, which was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And they came over for that. Now. Do you recall uh, when the war with Japan ended and World War II was over? What <laughs> that was that was like? That was another celebration. <clears throat> and we all went downtown again. Down to Albany. And it was so exciting. Mm -hmm. Lots of traffic and people everywhere. <clears throat> but we were relieved. Mm -hmm. But we were so busy with nurses training. Sure. Now, what, what year did you graduate from your nurse's training? In 48. 48. Well, I graduated three times. Once with the college, and then the nurses had a special graduation because our term went along longer. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten sick and taken a week off 
at some time, so I had to make up a week. So I got a blank diploma twice, and then finally, the day I finished making up my time, I got the real diploma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once you completed your training, uh, where did you go to work? Well, I got married. I finished in uh, June, I think, mm -hmm. June or July. Got married in August and then went to work at Albany Medical Center where I had trained. Oh, okay. And I worked there for 17 years. Was your husband a veteran? Yes. He went the day after Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. he, he was at Green Mountain College. He and a group of guys went down and volunteered to join the service. So he was tested to be a pilot, but he had defective hearing oh. from uh, scarlet fever when he was young. Mm -hmm. So they put him into, uh, he was in the Army Air Corps repairing turrets from the B-17. They had, in the tailpiece, they had turrets to machine gun anything mm -hmm. and they had to those turrets had to be very accurate or they could shoot off the plane's engine or yep. something. <laughs> now did he go overseas? He went he went on the Queen Mary uh -huh. which was outfitted for twenty thousand soldiers and they had tiers of bunks not just two, but three mm -hmm. going down. And <clears throat> going over, they had to zigzag every few feet because the submarines were sure. all there. He got to England, and then he was sent to Belgium, and then he was sent to France. And when the war was over, they put him on an, a second-class boat, <laughs> and it took him a month to get back to the state. Oh, now what, do you know? Was he with the Eighth Air Force by chance? He was in the Army Air Force. Right. Okay. I, I'm just assuming uh, he was. If he was over in, in that area, he was probably with the Eighth Air Force. I don't know. Okay. So, anyways. Uh, you got married? We, he, I didn't even meet him until after he got back home. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you an interesting story. When he got home, he wanted a car. Well, there were no cars, no new cars for civilians. Everything had gone into production for airplanes. So he bought a second-hand car, a 34 Ford, with no front seat. Then he and his buddy went to a dump, uh -huh. a car dump. A junkyard, found, probably. <laughs> and found a front seat and put it in. And there were no straps to protect you. No seat belts. No seat belts. And it was standard shift. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to drive. But we used to go up in the Heldebergs and drive all around. And my husband taught me how to drive up in the Heldebergs. Oh boy. He figured <laughs> I couldn't hurt anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and he would take me up there, get out of the car, and say, now back up for five miles down the road, do a three-point turn, and come back this way. And I could do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, did you have any, any children? Three. Three? A daughter and two sons. Uh-huh. But they... They have not participated in any war. Uh-huh. Any, gr any grandchildren? 
I have seven grandchildren, wow. one grandson, and all the rest are girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, you, you gave me a couple photographs here, and I want, want you to hold them up. Actually, this one here is a later one. Uh, but uh, this was taken during the war. If you hold that up right in front of you, I can zoom in on it with the, uh, okay. with the camera. That was my graduation from okay, high school, I think. All right. Let me zoom right in on that. That was taken 1944. Yes. Okay, I got that one. All right, and then the other photograph. I'm trying to think. You were right, driving a lawn tractor, it looks like. Yes. At a friend's farm. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, how long ago was that taken? Back in the 70s, it looks like, maybe? Uh, probably in the late 60s, 70s. Okay. All right. And uh, any other stories or um, incidents you can remember about the war? Now you mentioned rationing and, and with the shoes and that. Now I heard stories of the women not having stockings and oh, and, yes. and drawing. <laughs> and, yes, and with my sisters. I had an older sister and I was in the middle. My brother was the oldest and then we had two younger sisters. But whenever we went out on a date, we didn't have stockings, mm -hmm. so we had paint, leg paint, and we paint, and it came in different colors, uh -huh. and you could paint your legs, <laughs> and that was, that was a job. Uh huh. And then you you drew like a, a line up the back of your leg for the. Oh, we didn't bother the with that. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, we just painted our legs and went out. Oh, okay. And what about, uh, you know, when you went on a, out on a date back then, did you go mostly to, like, I know things were, were rationed. Did you go to movies? and? I remember going to see Gone with the Wind. Oh. When it first came out. Yeah. And it was, they, it was so long they had an intermission. Yes. <laughs> but a friend of mine took me, so I didn't have to pay the quarter. <laughs> it was a quarter, and that was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I used to babysit for 10 cents an hour. I used to wash dishes for 10 cents an hour. I used to iron shirts for neighbors for 10 cents an hour. Huh. But you could buy a pair of shoes, this is after the war, for three dollars. Mm -hmm. Now during the war, what about you know, if you wanted to go out for a hot dog or a hamburger, were there any shortages of of re restaurant food or, or snack food like that? I never had the money to go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I never had, our family never went out with seven people. Mm -hmm. There was no money. <coughs> but when my I'm trying to think. After the war, my father and mother took us down to Rhode Island for a, a vacation mm -hmm. at Charleston Beach. So that was the first I remember of a vacation. The rest of the time, it, during the war, we didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. There was no transportation. and. We didn't have vacations. Mm -hmm. Now, did your mom work outside the home, or, or did she take in like laundry or, 
or anything like that? Or no, she <laughs> she had enough laundry with seven. Oh, of I can I can imagine. <laughs> and she had this old-fashioned washing machine mm -hmm. with a single post and three the big. Uh, they looked like plungers. Oh, okay. And that would go up and down. Uh huh. And then a ringer. Yep. Ring it into the set tubs, rinse it, and then ring it into another set tub. And then she had no dryer, of mm -hmm. course. So if it was a good day, it all went out on the clothesline. If it wasn't a good day, it got hung in the kitchen on a rack. Oh. Yep. Up near the ceiling. Yep. Hmm. But she worked hard. Every Saturday morning, she would get up early and fry donuts. She made the best donuts. About four and a half dozen. Then she'd make a pie and a couple cakes and cookies. Mm -hmm. That was her day to cook. And we had a kitchen. My my grandfather, on my father's side, works at worked at Albany at um, Vermont Marble Company, mm -hmm. and he installed in my mother's kitchen a nice marble molding board, big. So she did all her pies and cakes oh, okay. and cookies on yep. that. So your grandparents were around during the war too. My, I never saw my mother's grandfather mm -hmm. or mother, and I never saw my father's grandmother. But my father's grandfather used to come and visit us. Mm -hmm. He was from Sweden. Oh, he came over and got the job in. Vermont Marble. And interestingly enough, his name was... No, he would have been your grandfather, your your father's father? Yeah. Okay. His name was Henrik Johansson. And when he came to work for Vermont Marble, they called him, this is too complicated, we're going to call you Henry Johnson. <laughs> and you didn't have to go to court and get your name changed or anything. That's uh -huh. what he did. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Now you mentioned uh, when you were aircraft spotting the old bus with the stove inside. After the war ended, uh, do you know whatever happened to that? Did they no. tow it away or did it just rot away? Or I'm sure they took the phone out. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. Because mm -hmm. I went off to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, any anything else uh, you'd like to talk about before we we end the uh, interview? I don't. Anything we didn't cover? Oh, I, the the telephone. And everybody had one telephone. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't dial a num a, somebody's number. You had to pick up the receiver, and the operator would say, Number, please. And you would give her the number. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, she could listen in to all the gossip. <laughs> <laughs> was it somebody you knew that was the operator? No. Okay. And my mother would limit the phone. Mm hmm she just figured that we shouldn't be on the phone for the fun of it. So, or to talk to our friends when we uh -huh. see them. She was quite strict. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for your interview. Oh, you're it was welcome. Very interesting.